What's up guys, Chris here from Crisis Point and welcome back to the channel and this is the Poco F5. Now we'll be doing a quick unboxing as well as for me to give you guys my impressions, my review of me using this device as my daily driver for the past two to three weeks now and without further delay, let's do this. All right, so this is the Poco F5. Now I've been seeing a lot of content about the Poco F5 for the past few weeks now. Often than not, it's mainly because of the original sibling, which is the Redmi Note 12 Turbo. So now we have the Poco F5 in the flesh. So opening the lid, we're greeted with a welcome packet that contains the SIM ejector pin, the warranty and user guide, the clear jelly case that comes in the package, the device itself, a 67 watt charger in the box, a Type-C cable for charging and data transfer. In front, we have some four features of the Poco F5, but the star attraction for this device is is the Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2 processor, which is an advanced 4 nanometer processor with 5G capability. Now, the reason why this is very important for a lot of you is that this is the first smartphone to be released in the Philippine market and potentially globally to rock the Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2 processor. And we've heard a lot of great things about this particular processor, so I'm very much excited that the mass consumers will be treated with a flagship grade smartphone without having to pay a premium price tag. Of course, the other features are also important, but the star attraction is the Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2 processor. So here we have the actual device itself. I'm not sure if there's going to be some fancy branding for colors, but basically this is the black color variant. Now what's interesting about the F5 is that the design itself has taken some elements from the original Poco X3 NFC, where it's giving you some kind of a carbon print. So here's a quick sample of what the device looks like with the clear jelly case. And as you can see, it is quite a fingerprint magnet. So for those of you who are not a big fan of this, you can always go for something else. I was able to acquire a frosted protective case, which is from Nilkin, but this is designed specifically for the Redmi Note 12 Turbo. And because we all know that the Poco F5 is a rebrand of the Redmi Note 12 Turbo, then we are 100% guaranteed that the accessories for the 12 Turbo will be applicable with the Poco F5. So again, having to use Nilkin case adds a bit of thickness to the device. And at the same time, it also adds a little bit of heft, which gives me that level of assurance because this device is a very light smartphone. So towards the right, we have the flush power button that doubles as a sleep weight key, as well as the volume rockers. Up top, we have the IR blaster, the secondary microphone, the secondary speaker, and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Towards the left, it's completely bare. And down at the bottom, we have the primary speaker, the USB type C port for charging and data transfer, the primary microphone, and a SIM card tray that houses two nano SIM cards. Sadly, there is no expansion, but this does come with 256 gigabytes of onboard storage. And towards the rear, we have a 64 megapixel triple camera configuration with an 8 megapixel ultra wide camera and a 2 megapixel macro camera that supports 4K video recording with OIS and EIS. Let's now talk about the display on the Poco F5. So the Poco F5 is rocking a 6.67 inch full HD plus flow AMOLED dot display. This is basically the same technology that was used with the previous X5 Pro about a few months ago. So this comes with a resolution of 2400 by 1080 with support for 120 hertz refresh rate and a 240 hertz touch sampling rate. In terms of brightness, it can go up to 1000 nits peak brightness, but on a typical day, it just sits at 500 nits, which is not bad. Generally, if you're going to put away all those technical mumbo jumbo. This is a very beautiful screen on a mid-range smartphone. It's not going to give you that quad HD 4K resolution and all that jazz, but it is still a very beautiful screen considering the value proposition on how much it is being sold in the market. So out of the box, as mentioned, it does have 120 hertz refresh rate and you do have the option to change that to specifically 60 hertz or specifically 120 hertz. But by default, it will automatically adjust itself depending on what you're doing with the device itself. In addition to the high refresh rate, the Poco F5 also supports memory extension. Now there are two RAM configurations for the Poco F5, at least for the Philippine market from what I know. There is an 8GB variant and a 12GB variant, which is what I'm using right now. By default, when this came out of the box, the memory extension is set to 3GB. Now I've set this to 7, which if you add that virtual RAM towards the physical RAM on the Poco F5, that brings up the total amount of RAM to 
19 gigabytes of RAM. That's 19 gigabytes of additional memory resource that helps the Snapdragon chip inside the F5 to perform fluidly and very efficient overall. So this basically means if you're going to be running multiple applications in the background, playing games and all that jazz, you will barely see any performance drops, lags and all that stuff. Of course, another incentive in getting the F5 is that this is rocking the latest version of MIUI, which is MIUI 14. This is based on top of Android 13. So you basically have the latest and greatest in terms of hardware and software. And this device is going to support you for the next two to three years or more. So going back to the resolution of the Poco F5, to put it simple, if you're going to be watching content on YouTube and set it to, let's say, 2K, you'd be amazed that the Poco F5 can handle such flawlessly, regardless of the viewing angle, regardless of how close it is. Any type of content you watch on the Poco F5 will be a treat as it will give you a very enjoyable experience in watching your content. Now, as far as gaming is concerned, obviously we just had to go with the gaming aspect of the device because that's basically what Poco is being geared towards to a device that is affordable for the masses that can bring out the best gaming experience without having to spend a top dollar price point. And with the Poco F5, it just did that because of the Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2 processor pair that with a liquid cool technology 2.0 which prevents the device from overheating and sustains the actual performance i just had to test it out with one of the most demanding titles on the play store as of 2023 during my testing obviously there are certain settings that i did not max out and it's mainly because i did not want to experience a game that would lag. I wanted to configure the game in a way that I would visually enjoy what I'm seeing while enjoying the actual gameplay in real time. So I've configured it in a way that the visuals will not suck, but at the same time, it would still be a very enjoyable experience. Now, throughout this testing, I did enable the FPS counter, which you can see on the upper right hand side. And I'm impressed because despite the setting in terms of the graphics, the FPS counter was able to sustain the actual performance of the game. It was ranging from 58, 59 to 60, to which case I've also even overclocked the graphical settings to maximum frame rates and still the game was able to run flawlessly. Now with Call of Duty Mobile, I was able to set the graphics to high and the frame rate to maximum, which is interesting because other flagship phones would actually have more graphical settings. For some reason, the Poco F5 only has up to high. What's important to me, as mentioned, is the frame rates, and I'm able to max out the actual frame rates. Now, obviously, having to max out the frame rates can cause potential overheating and draining of battery, but I didn't actually feel that much of an impact with Call of Duty Mobile, despite the actual setting. What's interesting, though, is that while playing Call of Duty Mobile with maximum frame rates, there was very little to no lag. The gameplay was very fluid, it's very smooth, touch response was on point, so I'm pretty sure everyone who's actually doing a lot of Call of Duty mobile streaming on Facebook gamings and whatnot, you're gonna have a lot of fun with the Poco F5. So last but not the least for the gaming test is Diablo Immortal. So Diablo Immortal is actually not that graphically hungry. You do have the option to set the resolution to, to high and frame rates to 60. It doesn't support ultra, which is still not a deal breaker by any means. But the interesting part is that you're actually able to max out the gameplay without any lag whatsoever and enjoy those graphics popping up on screen. Now, obviously, it's not going to be that demanding in contrast to Genshin Impact and Call of Duty Mobile, but you will be able to enjoy that experience when playing Diablo. I mean, if you've been the player of Diablo from Diablo 1, Diablo 2, Lord of Destruction, Diablo 3, and so on and so forth, and obviously, you will get that level of nostalgia when playing Diablo Immortal on the Poco F5. Now, as far as the camera performance on the Poco F5, I'm gonna be franked at this point because so far in my experience of testing Poco devices, the best cameras that I've tested for Poco are coming from two devices, the Poco F2 Pro and the Poco X5 Pro. The camera configuration on the F5 is okay. I wouldn't say it's the best, but it is okay. It is a performer. I did try to take a few sample shots with the F5 about a few weeks ago, as well as some video recordings while walking down the street. And for the most part, 
it was able to do justice with its configuration. I probably would have wanted to have a telephoto lens instead of a macro lens, probably a higher megapixel count for the ultra wide sensor. But of course, we can't just have everything crammed into one device. So generally, if you're going to use the F5 in terms of camera performance or in terms of photography, you'll be rest assured that the F5 will do justice to your work. It's not going to be the best of the best where you can blow up the image and use it as a poster for a billboard, but it'll do just fine if you'll be just taking photos for capturing those life precious moments or posting on social media and stuff. So overall, in terms of me using the Poco F5 as my daily driver for the past two to three weeks now, I can honestly say this is gonna be a banger phone in 2023. So if you're in the market and getting a new smartphone that isn't that expensive, but outperforms the vast majority of smartphones in the market today, feel free to click the links in the description down below for your convenience. Now, if you did enjoy this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel for more tech reviews and unboxing videos. Thanks again for watching. This is Chris once again from Crisis Point, and I'll catch you in the next.